I'd been looking for a six horsepower engine for a while, and last October at a tractor and engine show here in Crawford, this one came looking for me. Mike Sullivan had this McCormick Deering six horsepower Type M on his trailer. We quickly made a deal. Mike's a great guy, and after the show, he and a couple of his buddies brought it up the road to our ranch. We used my tractor to lift it off the trailer and onto a couple of timbers outside my shop. According to Mike, the engine came from a cotton gin in West Texas, where it was used as a backup power unit. The engine is typically called a kerosene engine that was started on gasoline and then switched over to kerosene. It also has water injection. Based on my serial number research, it was built in 1923. The first thing I did was photograph the engine from every conceivable angle. I made sure to shoot all the detail parts, literally, from the bottom up. You'll note it was pretty dirty and covered in surface rust. All the parts appeared to be there and intact, and the flywheels turned over with good compression. The next thing was to build a heavy duty cart so we could move the engine into the shop. So here we are on July the 20th, 2022. This is a big engine. The flywheels are 28 inches in diameter and probably weigh 75 pounds a piece. Safety is very important. Use care while rigging and lifting. I first took off the mixer. The studs were just too tight to remove. Next, I remove the igniter. Note the brass gaskets. These are extremely important, as I'll explain later when we talk about the magneto. Here's the front of the engine with the head removed. You'll need at least a half inch drive ratchet and up to one and one sixteenth inch sockets and combination wrenches, as well as a piece of two inch pipe for leverage and persuasion. Looking inside the cylinder sleeve, we see a lot of carbon deposit at the top end, but fortunately no scoring of the cylinder wall. The stud bolts were seriously frozen in place. Note also all the holes. The six horsepower head is water-cooled, a feature not seen on smaller Type M's. Here's the head as removed. The gasket is, of course, shot. There's a lot of gasket compound residue which required lacquer thinner and a wire brush to remove. I soaked the entire head in this five gallon bucket of evapo rust. After a rinse and some wire brush work, it looked great. The exhaust valve was worn down pretty bad. The intake valve was probably okay, but I decided to order a new set from Flywheel Supply. On arrival, they were beautiful, brand new valves. But my engine has low tension igniter ignition. Most six horsepower type M's are high tension spark ignition and have larger pistons and valves, as Paul at Flywheel explained. While they would work, I decided to keep the new valves and find me an automotive machine shop. As a teenager, I hung around a hot rod shop in the early 1960s. Boy, those were the days. Well, I met a guy about my age that owns a real hot rod and engine rebuilding shop in Waco. Outlaw Jack had fueled dragster trophies all over his walls and hundreds of blocks and heads being worked on. 
He also builds custom racing engines and was extremely interested in my project. His shop is fully equipped for all types of engine work, from regrinding crankshafts to cylinder boring, valve making, and grinding. Outlaw and I talked and talked and called the flywheel supply folks about the valves, guides, and tolerances. The takeaway was simple. My six horsepower M is not a racing engine. Tolerances, close enough's okay. Precision machining is not necessary. Jack was excited and said he would turn the new valves, grind the seats, and make some other refinements. I left the head and new valves with the outlaw, but more on this in the next episode. My workflow for restoring engines and machinery is to soak the parts in solvent such as this. It's used in parts washers and has a very low flash point. Tractor Supply may or may not carry this anymore. I use a siphon sprayer with my air compressor, and it works really, really well. Evapo Rust, while expensive, works great. A 24-hour soak is usually necessary, followed by a water rinse and blow dry. Wire brush on my grinder or drill motor really helps as well. I use Rust-Oleum Red Metal Primer. With the extreme dry heat we've had this summer, all the prime parts enjoyed a good 12-hour bake in the Texas sun. Here's the mixer before and after the cleaning, priming, and painting process. The finished paint is Rust-Oleum Gloss Hunter Green. And these are some of the other parts removed, cleaned, and painted. I used small zip bags to keep all the parts together. It was time to tackle removing the flywheels. As you can see, the heavy duty cart was a big help. This is a Gib key. If you want to know all about them and all about Type M engines, watch Shop Dog Sam's massive video collection on YouTube. He be the man. I learned about PB Blaster and a whole lot more from the shop dog. I made a drawing in pal Jake Holmes' plasma cut to Gib Key Puller. The two Gib Keys came out just as the shop dog said they would. Go check out his channel and watch. He's a lot more colorful than I am. Here's how I used an engine hoist and wheel puller to remove both the flywheels.
The governor is a fascinating device. Here's what it looks like, removed and all cleaned up. The governor side flywheel has a hub machined inside and out. This is where the governor fits. With both flywheels off and on furniture dollies, it was time to tackle the main bearings, side plates, piston, and crankshaft. But first, I made more pictures to help me keep things straight. So away we go. Removing the bearing caps was pretty straightforward. Be careful with those shims and try to keep them in order, right and left. I removed the connecting rod, bearing cap, and shims, but did not pull the piston out at this point. The engine hoist was called back into service to hold the crankshaft while I removed the governor side side cover. The magneto side side cover must be removed in order to get the crankshaft out of the block. And one crankshaft. Once the side covers and crank were out of the way, the piston was pulled out with ease. The rings and piston looked okay to me, but the outlaw wanted to give them a good going over as well as the cylinder liner and the crankshaft itself. He was fascinated with the crankshaft lubrication system, which we'll go over in the final episode. The side covers shown after the treatment. The Babbitt bearings were in extremely good shape. We'll finish up part one now by cleaning and prepping the flywheels. Now these suckers are heavy, but thankfully my sweet wife helped me turn them over.
Thanks for watching. Part two will be along very shortly. Please subscribe and also check out my other videos on engines, trains, photography, history, and ham radio.